Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was faced with a life-threatening situation. They had never been confronted with this before. What do you do? Do you bow before this golden image and disappoint God? Or do you stand on your religious belief and your faith, regardless what the circumstance would be? What would you do in this situation? Join me as we talk about a bold faith to find out what they did. National Standard Sunday School Lesson, uh, verse by verse, keywords and phrases. Today's topic is a bold faith. We're dealing in the book of Daniel, the third chapter, verses 19 through 23 and verses 26 through 28. I wanted to address at least four questions in here. Number one, where was Daniel while his friends were in this trouble? Number two, why didn't they bow to the king's golden image. Number three, why was the king so furious at the Hebrews? And number four, why were the Hebrew boys thrown into the fiery furnace? Where was Daniel in all of this? This was another question that was asked uh, by one of the subscribers. Great question. I'm loving the questions. Keep them coming. Keep them going. Number one, Daniel may have been away on official business for the king because Daniel was a very important man and he was in charge of a whole lot of the business of the king. He was probably out taking care of some official business. That's what some say. Uh, but I believe within my spirit that it was probably not the will of God that Daniel be involved, involved in this matter. Prior to this lesson, Daniel was placed in a very powerful position. Later, he asks the king to place Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a high position as well. At Daniel's request, the king did it. But I don't believe it was God's will that Daniel always be around the three Hebrew boys. I believe that came to a point to where they had to be on their own. And this is one of the reasons why I believe it. According to the scripture, the scripture says that every man must bear his own cross. Which tells me that there comes a time when though you have a team or unit or a class of friends that you're with, that's sometimes when they can't go with you when you got to go through the fire. But the Lord said that he would be there. Then I believe in Isaiah 43, chapter, uh, verse 2 to 3, he says, When you walk through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. I believe that this had to take place so that scripture can be fulfilled. And then finally, Hebrews 11, 33 and 34, I believe that, that had to take place too, which lets us know that through faith, they quenched the violence of the fire. These last two scriptures is going to show up in our lesson later on. Another question would be, why were the Hebrew boys in this trouble? Why were they in this trouble? What took place that caused them to be in this trouble as we get into the lesson. If you look in Daniel the third chapter, verses 8 and verses 12, you note that this statue had already been erected and that the crier, the herald, or the, uh, the edict had already gone out that when you hear this music and the different instruments, that everyone was to bow down and worship it. The Bible says that there came certain Jews or certain, I'm sorry, certain Chaldeans who, number one, said that they accused the brethren. They accused the Jews of not bowing down. So uh, they were in this trouble because 
there were some accusers of the Chaldeans. And number two, I believe that they were accusers because they were jealous of them. They were jealous because the three, three Hebrew boys had been placed over the province of Babylon, which means they had been placed over them as well. And you'd be surprised what people do just because of jealousy. So that's why I believe that these boys were in this trouble. Before we get to the fire, why they were here at the king's palace about to get their necks cut off. Number two, why didn't they bow to the king's golden image? To me, it's a very important question, which this is part of the lesson. I would like to also note that in this lesson, the Bible calls them men. Prior to this lesson, in last week's lesson, they called them children. So there could be anywhere from a 10 to 20 year time span from the last week's lesson to this week's lesson. Uh, last week's lesson, the king was looking for children, as they call it. And children in the Hebrew is up to 16, 17, 18 years old, which means they were still young teenagers. By the time they get to this, they were 10 or 20 years older. And it calls them men. And we'll probably pull that out. Why didn't they bow to the king's golden image? Number one. It was against the Ten Commandments. When you go to Exodus 20. Verses 3 through 6. And remember that these are still Hebrews. Regardless of the fact that they have been taken captive by King Nebuchadnezzar. And they are in Babylon. Regardless of the fact that God said that this was going to happen through Isaiah. From uh, uh, in the book of Isaiah, I should say, regardless of that fact, they're still now what we call in Rome. And it is said when in Rome do as the Romans, but I beg to differ when in Rome still be a Jew or when in Rome be true to who you are. You want to coin that phrase. So it was against the Ten Commandments or part of the Ten Commandments in Exodus 23 through 6. Number one, it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two, it says, Thou shalt not make any graven images unto thee and number three it says thou shalt not bow thyself down to them nor serve them and these boys wanted to hold true to who they were let's get in to the actual lesson we're in daniel the third chapter verses 19 through 23 daniel 3 verses 19 through 23 and we'll go verse by verse then was nebuchadnezzar full of fury and the form of his visage was changed against shadrach meshach and abednego therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated now you're going to notice the word heat the word fire the word fiery furnace Throughout this lesson, which really implies this whole lesson is dealing with heat and fire. The king's heat and the furnace's heat. Heat is, <laughs> is throughout this entire language. So Nebuchadnezzar, he gets full of fury. Now, the question may be asked, why was the king so angry? Worshiping the image expressed loyalty to the king. If they worship the image, it would be proof that they would be showing loyalty to the king. Which means the opposite. If they don't worship, that means that they would be disloyal to the king. And no king wants any of his subjects to be disloyal to him. If he gives an edict, then it's supposed to be carried out whether he's there or not. So number one, your allegiance is expressed in your obedience. Your allegiance is expressed in your obedience. Jesus says in John 14 and 15, if you love me, keep my commandment. Your allegiance is expressed in your obedience. Even our children, we should be able to leave home with our children at home and because they have their allegiance to us, they're going to do what we instructed them to do whether we're there or not. Your allegiance is expressed in your obedience. He had given the Hebrew boys another chance to bow. When you go to Daniel 3 and 15, he had given them because when they called him, the, the three Hebrew boys, to the king, he asked them of this matter. And 
when you get to chapter 3 and verse 15, he gave them another chance. He says, I'm going to give you another chance that when you hear the music, you have another opportunity to bow. Now, basically, he was supposed to have already had them killed because the edict said that if you don't do it, the same hour you would be burnt in the fire. But the king gave them another opportunity. So the king says, this, this is important to me. The king says, who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? I'd never seen this before, but this right here is powerful. He asked, who is that God that can deliver you out of my hands? This is what the children of Israel, this is what the Hebrew boy said. Number one, they says, we don't need to defend ourselves. Whew. Number two, they said, our God is able to deliver us out of the furnace. He is able to deliver us out of the furnace. Number three, them boys get bold and tough and says, our God will deliver us out of your hands. The king asked, who is this God that will deliver you out of my hands? And they said, our God will deliver us out of your hands. When they get through wrapping it up, they still stood flat, face flat footed and said, we will not serve nor worship your gods. Then the Bible says the king got angry. He was full of fury. Now the word fury means anger. It means rage. And then something took place. It mentions his visage. His visage. Now the Bible talked about Jesus' visage was marred more than any man. When they beat him on the cross, his visage, which means his facial expression, was marred than any other man on the face of the earth. So visage means a face or a facial expression. The New Living Translation says his face became distorted with rage. He had gotten upset and filled with anger, filled with rage, and filled with wrath because of what they said unto him. Why make the fire hotter? Number one, Making the fire hotter is an expression of the king's anger. The king was very angry at what these young men just said. Number two, it is a public display of the penalty. Making this fire hotter is a public display of the penalty of those who refuse to do what they were supposed to do. This edict that was given to them by the king. But notice he said make it hotter because a low fire burns slower causes a long death. But high flames shows rage and immediate death. And this is what the king wanted to demonstrate in his high fire, making it seven times hotter. Now, it is said that seven means complete, which means to make it completely hot. Make it as, as hot as it can get because it's really showing the wrath of the king as well. But it also tells me that if anybody can come out of this, that means God can save even in the greatest of the situation, which he does in this. Then when the king's men dies, it becomes full proof that what this fire can do. Still dealing with why make this fire hot. When the king's men dies from it, it's full proof that this fire can kill right on the spot. And then it was made hotter. To demonstrate the power of God, even in the hottest of situations. Come on, somebody. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, be angry, <laughs> but sin not. This man moved in his anger. It is never good to move in your anger. Now, he said that they made it uh, seven times hotter than his want. The word want means the usual condition or the normal condition. He made it seven times hotter than the normal condition. Now, I don't know what he did to make it harder, but he apparently was able to do it. Verse 20 says, And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning uh, fiery. Now, notice something. Burning fiery furnace. All three is heat. In our today's language, we, we would say uh, you saying the same thing because the word burning, uh, you know, is fire. And the word fire, uh, fiery, denotes burning. 
and but the the Hebrews or the writer wants to show us how intense this whole situation was that he would call it burning fiery furnace the king commands the most mighty now this is unique to me because he's about to command his highest authority his highest strength his highest men to take these boys and throw them into this fire when these guys die it shows that even the king's highest men is nothing against God <laughs> and uh, these three Hebrew boys. So he commanded the most mighty men that they were to bind them. Now, the, the word bind means to tie, to tie up and the word cast means to throw down, to toss in. I don't believe that they bound them because they needed someone of strength. I believe they had to bind them because it is said that the way that this fiber furnace was, it had a, a, a top and a lower. In other words, you would drop things down into it. And then those who were down below could see it. But this is where you would take the ashes out, like a stove. You put it in on the top, but you pull the ashes out at the bottom. So the king was probably at the lower part where he can look in there where they would take the ashes out. These men, it was it is said they probably had to climb stairs to bring them in, which explains why they had to be strong. Because when they bound them, they had to literally carry those men probably and toss them into the fire. So they would toss them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego bound them, toss them into the fire. Then it says verse 21 and these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the fiery, uh, burning fiery furnace. Now, it is said by history, usually what takes place is they would prepare you for this fire. They normally would strip you of your clothing and then toss you in the fire. But because of the rage of the king, because of the anger, and because of the command, because of the fury that stood up, the, the rage that stood up in the king, they, there was no time. He commanded them, commanded them to make it hot, and commanded them to throw them boys, bind them, and throw them in there now. And everything he did, he did it because he was raging. <laughs> so keep in mind, now these boys were most likely young men now. They were no more children. Now, the question is, why were they bound with all their garments on? Why were they bound with all their garments on? Number one, I believe it was to show the urgency of the king's command, like I said before. No time to prepare them for execution. And number two, it is to show the power of God. By not allowing any of their garment pieces to smell like smoke. In other words, these garments that they had on were flammable. They were flammable material. I don't have to go into the different parts of the clothing. To me, it's not necessary. But the fact that they were fully dressed and they were bound with flammable clothing on and their material did not burn. That's the part that I love. Nor was there any kind of smell. Keep on going. Verse 22 says, Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The flame, now the word slew means to kill. Because the fire was so hot. Now this is intensified fire. And it's so hot till it should have burned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with these men as well. But the Bible lets us know that the strongest of this man's army, he grabbed for the greatest. He grabbed for his strength. And his highest strength took these little weak Jew boys to cast them into a furnace, bound them to cast them in the furnace. But as they were trying to cast them in, these guys died. That tells me so many amount of people that may rise up against you. Not going to be able to make it. Lord have mercy. Verse 23 says, And these uh, three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, now they fell down into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. They fell down. Verse 28. Uh, we're going to go to verse 26. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God. Notice what he called them, the Most High God. Come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Now, there's a great jump in our lesson. But right before we get to verse 26, the king asks a question. He says, now, he's got government officials. All are here with him. See, God never leaves himself without a witness. He's got government officials with him watching this whole scene. Because he was having a national meeting. So he sees when he looks over and he notices that we put in three. Because he kept using the word bound. Didn't we put three in bound? There was a question that was asked to me uh, by one of the subscribers. I believe it was Karen Leader. Was Daniel in this fire? Uh, or I think she says that she thought that he was until she really read the lesson. I believe that's what she said. And the answer is no, Daniel was not. Now, I'm not saying that she said that he was, but I'm saying she, I think, thought that he was. But the answer is no, Daniel was not in there. There were only three. The men that threw them in there had burned. They already gone. The fire slew them. The fire killed them. So, it really, the king killed his own men. Hmm. He caused the death of his own strength. He don't have that much strength now because his strength is dead. So they throw them in there. Then the king looks over and he notices that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were bound in the fire. Now they're no longer bound in the fire. And there's no longer three of them, but it's four of them. And they're loose in the fire, yet they're still in the fire. My God, there's a conversation going on in this fire. So the king calls them and he says uh ye servants of the most high god i love how he says this he calls them the servants because they have now proved a point to him that we are the servants of god keep in mind they told him that god was going to deliver them out of his hands and he says now you servants of the most high god come forth and come hither and the Bible says they came forth of the midst of the fire. Now, why would he expect them to be still alive? Is, 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 he really didn't expect them to be alive. But when he looked up in there, he saw something. Now, he says the fourth one looks like the Son of God. We believe that that was uh, a pre-incarnate of Jesus Christ himself. Or it could have been an angel. Whoever it was. It, we know it came from God. It didn't come from the wells. And it was, it was not Daniel. So verse 27 says, And the princes, governors, captains, kings, counsel, or kings, counselors, being gathered together, they saw these men. Now, this is a public arena that's taking place. These men are about to show the strength of God, the power of God, and they're showing us what takes place in our life when we stand whole or strong to our faith, strong to our belief, when we stand bold in our faith. These men stood bold in their faith and they did not take down. Take down. Let me say that. We're in a land now when so, much, so many laws are being made and uh, passed certain laws. We don't have to step down to no law that is ungodly. We do not have to step down to any law that is ungodly. We must stand for what's right. Stand on the word of God like Daniel did last week. Purpose in our heart not to defile ourselves with the king's meat. And let God be God and let God judge man and let God take care of this matter. So uh, they noticed that the, the bodies, the fire had no power. The word power is very important. It was no, the fire had no power, nor was hair of their heads singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Can somebody help me say, I don't look like what I've been through. Now that's the real statement. That's the real statement. I don't look like what I have been through. Now it says that the word power, that the fire, 
the fire had no power. The word fire, the word power means to rule over. Usually when fire comes upon an individual, fire has the power over your body to rule you. Fire cleanses, fire purifies, but fire burns up and fire destroys. And no one can come up against fire. It is a natural thing. You cannot come up against fire. Fire will win all the time. But here, the fire did not have no power over these men. Nor was their hair on their head singed. Nothing was burned. Nor was their smell. Nor were their coats changed. Which means their coats, whatever color it was, it was still that color. Because the word change means to go from something to something else in other words if your coat is burnt it would be changed it would cease to be what it was and it would be whatever the fire left it to be but these men were not burnt they didn't have no smell they didn't have singe their eyebrows wasn't off or nothing and the fire had no power the fire had no control i heard uh, isaiah 43 verse 2 and 3 says when you walk through the fire you won't be burned. <laughs> when you walk through the fire, it will not take you out. It won't burn you. The Bible always right, and we've got to line up to it. And this is back to Hebrews 11, 33 and 34. It says that through faith, they quenched the violence of fire. Now, the word violence is another word for uh, power, which is dunamis. So, in other words, these men's faith is what quenched the violence of the fire. They had faith that God would bring them out. And because they had faith and they demonstrated by not bowing down to the king, God honored them. He honored their faith. And as they went through, those who didn't have faith, but their faith was in the king, they died. But those who had faith in God, they survived. Then, verse 28 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their god. Now, I want to close out with this. He says, God sent his angel and delivered them. Now, the word de delivered them that trust in him. He, he, he lists a couple of things. Trust in him, change the king's word, and yielded their bodies to him. The word trust literally means to put your trust, to put your confidence, to rely upon, to depend upon. Uh, he, he, he alludes to the fact, or he says the fact, that God sent his angel. And the reason why God sent his angel is because those men trusted in God. They did not waver in their faith. They did not bow down to this golden image. They refused even though their life was threatened. Even though they were told, if you don't do it, you're going to die in the fire. But they trusted in God. And because they trusted in God, God sent the angel, which is what the king is saying. Oh, the king is preaching. He preaching. The king said he he they, they trusted him. And then he said they changed the king's words. Now, really, to change the king's words, what was the king's word? The king's word says that you're going to have to bow down or die. But they changed the king's word. They didn't bow down and they didn't die. So these men changed the king's word. His edict was if you don't bow, you're going to burn. But they didn't bow and they didn't burn. So they changed his words. And then they yielded their bodies to him. They took their literal bodies and they yielded their bodies. The Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable portion. And so then he says that they may not serve any God except their own God. This is a good lesson. This is a very powerful lesson. I love this lesson. It tells me that regardless of what we go through in life, we don't have to take down to man. We, we abide by the laws of this land as long as it does not conflict with the laws of God. Anytime we're confronted with, do I do 
what the law says or do I do what God says? Always do what God says. These three Hebrew boys lets us know that when you do what God says, you will always come out on top. You will always be successful. When you give a biblical principle, you receive a biblical answer. When you give a godly principle, you will receive a godly answer. When you stand firm on your faith and what you believe and don't waver, don't shake, don't step down, don't bow down and don't try to run with the crowd. And for God's sake, when in Rome, don't be like the Romans. Be like the children of God are supposed to do. Represent who God is. Do what we're supposed to do. Know his word and live on his word. Have faith. Have bold faith and stand on what you believe. That's it. I ain't going no further. I'm done. Y'all not going to get me to go any further. I think this was a good lesson. Those guys taught us how to do it. I I'll see you all on next week. Remember the Sunday school model. A child saved is a soul saved plus a life. Amen.